I am not concerned about the Made in China 2025. Really what it is is a reflection of what's going on in China today. China is no longer making cheap toys that go in McDonald's Happy Meals. They're becoming more and more sophisticated. And frankly, all they're trying to do is to become what the United States is. So if we see that as a threat, we're really just looking at, I think, the second most powerful country in the world wanting to become us. So uh, certainly the president in his own way is trying to make America greater, as he says. But this is just a reflection of what's going on today. Do you think that our trade moves are a reaction to what you just said, which is that China wants to be us and we don't want that? Well, two things. First of all, China has run an enormous trade deficit with us for the last, you know, 20 years. It was $376 billion last year. That can't continue. So the fact that the U.S. wants the trade deficit to be re reversed or at least dealt with better makes sense. Uh, but the second thing is, um, we as a country have essentially had free reign on world trade over the last 30 to 40 years. China is now coming into our space and being much more aggressive. I think this is more U.S. versus China than it is necessarily just, you know, we're unhappy with the Chinese. Dennis, there, there are two significant issues. One is the giant trade deficit, and the second is uh, the whole basket of issues around intellectual property. Um, when I try to look into the, the future and, and, and understand what a deal would look like, it feels to me like we'll get more on the trade deficit side and less on more IP protections for American companies because that's so critically important for China and it's a little bit harder for the U.S. electorate to understand the intellectual property issues and so President Trump may go for the easier win. What do you see the eventual outcome uh, being here? Well, if you look in the short run, I think China will really be hurt by the tariffs. In the longer run, I think the U.S. is going to be hurt as much or more than China. Our economies are so intertwined at this point, it's impossible to pull them apart. Whether you look at an iPhone or you look at any other technology-based uh, uh, product, all of these things are, have parts that come from China and the United States. Um, I think it's unrealistic for the president to think that in the next two or three months he can correct the trade deficit that's been going on really for, you know, the last 30 or 40 years. Um, I don't mind him trying, but I think the President Trump made a really big mistake. When we had the TPP that the U.S. had essentially adopted, President Trump in the first uh, two or three weeks of becoming president abrogated it. We walked away from, a, from, a, from an agreement which was essentially 12 countries, including the U.S. and not China, where they could essentially act as a counterweight to China's military and economic uh, presence in, in Asia and around the world. So um, it's sort of like at this point we're trying to impose tariffs with one hand tied behind our back. I a lot of the farmers that I've talked to or bourbon manufacturers who are already feeling the squeeze from these tariffs, Dennis, say that they're concerned not only with the, the actual tariff, but then those qualitative measures, for instance, Chinese inspectors holding their stuff up at the port so that the soybeans are rotting in port rather than getting to the buyers. How uh, instrumental can those qualitative measures be in putting pressure on the United States to come to the table and come up with some deal that's... Um, acceptable to China and acceptable to the United States as well? That's a great question uh, because in the long run, China has a $376 billion deficit. In other words, they can only put so many tariffs to counter the Trump tariffs on what's going there. The only thing they're really left with is the ability to say, all right, if you're bringing into port in Shanghai a, 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 a shipment of televisions, we can inspect it in a day or we can expect it in a week or we could take a month to do it. And these kind of non-tariff barriers, which, which the Chinese can impose. There's another thing. There are a lot of joint ventures between American companies and Chinese companies. Oftentimes, you will find that the Chinese entity in a joint venture will be influenced by the Chinese government to make it more difficult on their partner. So it's where I think China really has the, 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 the upper hand over us. Need a five-word answer, I, Dennis. Who blinks first, Trump or Xi? I, I think Trump blinks first. The reason is the Chinese, if they are patient, can wait 
for a long time, up to two or three years, when President Trump has to rerun. I, I think I, the U.S. will get a few, uh, a, a few concessions, but I think Trump blinks first.